Hi, this is David. In the last few videos, I've been talking about Docker and how to use it to create images and containers and volumes and so on. And I've done so mostly through the command line interface. But if you're working with Docker, Visual Studio Code is a great tool, particularly if you use the Docker extension in VS Code. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to install the Docker extension from Microsoft and some of the nice features of it. Now, if you're not using Visual Studio Code now, you can get to it really easily. Just go to code.visualstudio.com and click download either for Windows or Mac or Linux. They're all free. They're all really fast download. That's a really great development environment. Now, I've got, already got it installed. It's right here. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at, I have this application here. It's a simple node application. It runs on port 8081, and it has some... Uh, HTML and some JavaScript built into it. It's very simple. There's no dependencies or anything like that. Um, and I also have this Docker file. And to make it a little bit easier to work with, I am going to go to the Extensions button here in the left menu and search for Docker. It's right here. There's a bunch of Docker extensions, but I'm interested in this one from Microsoft. It has 16 million downloads, a five-star rating, so it's pretty good. Click on install, and installed very quickly, and what it did is it added this extra button here in my left toolbar. And in here you can see that there are a, a section for containers and images, networks and volumes, registries I'm connected to. I'm right now connected to the Docker Hub. Um, and uh, most of these things are empty because I really don't have any containers or images or things like that on my local machine. But I can create them, and I can use this extension to do so. For example, this Docker file, you notice first of all that there's some color coding in here, this this thing turning green because it knows that it's a repository. That's kind of nice. There's also some IntelliSense. Right now I'm I'm basing this any image I create on uh, the current Alpine version of Node. That's a tag that I'm using. But if I come in here and hit colon and then control space, it tells me all the tags that are available here. And in fact if I filter it one, one, and so on, then it actually filters it even further here. Now, I'm, I'm going to undo that because I, I really want that current version of Alpine for this. And I want to show you that if I just right click on this, then because I've installed this Docker extension, I now have an extra item in this context menu. It's build image. And if I click on build image, look down here in the terminal, you'll see that it'll It'll, well, first of all, up here, it'll ask me what's the name of the image that I want to create, and that's good. App 1 colon 1.0. I'll press enter right there, and down here you say Docker build pull uh, dash f Docker file, etc. And it went really quickly, but this is the task that is executing right here. I could have typed that in, but it saved me the trouble of doing so. And what this Docker build does is it creates a container based on this image right here, or based on actually all the stuff that's inside of the Docker file. If I go down to this Docker button here, you'll see that this image right here that it created, it's now it now appears here. And I can right click on that if I want to get rid of it. I can. If I want to inspect it, it'll output some JSON with a whole bunch of information about that image in here. Um, it's it's pretty nice. Uh, based on this, maybe I want to push it to a repository, or run it. What run will do is it'll create a container based on this image. So that's what I'm going to do here. In fact, I'll expand this terminal so you'll be able to see it again. I clear that out, and right-click and say run, and you'll see it did docker run detached mode based on that image, and it's all done. It created an image with that ID on it, and if I go over here to, I'm sorry, create a container rather, over to containers, you'll see there it is right here. And I can even look at the files in here for that container. There aren't a whole lot because it's such a simple application. But if I right click on this, now I can look at the logs on here. I can attach to a shell. So if I wanted to do bash commands right on that terminal, I can do that. Um, and bring that down a little bit. Um, let's go back down to the Docker here, and I'll notice that I have uh, 
I've got some networks here. If I wanted to create a new network, I can get plus here and specify uh, test network is my name, the name of the network, press enter. It'll ask me what kind of network, bridge, host, Mac, VLAN, etc. It creates a network on here. If I want to group multiple machines together, I'll just, I can of course inspect that and I can remove it. No problem there. And then volumes down here, there isn't an interactive way, as far as I know, with this tool to create a volume, but I can go to the command prompt, right here, and I can say docker image, or docker volume create and create a volume I'll call it vol1 right here and create it and now this will appear under volumes if I scroll down there's vol1 right there and I can inspect that and if I want to now I have these and I can attach it through the command line to a container when I next create it so you can see there are a lot of, oh, and the last thing I want to do here is uh, networks, or not networks, uh, registries. I've already connected to Docker Hub, but if I had other registries that I wanted to connect to, right here, this button right here, connect registry, I can connect to Azure, Docker Hub, some generic registry, GitLab. Docker Hub is the one that I did. I'd have to put in my Docker ID. I've already connected that, so it tells me that. And then it'll ask me for the password, and that's how I get these registries here, and if I expand that, then I can see these applications, or these volumes and containers and so on, uh, that are available on that doc register, the, 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 vo the uh, images that are available on that registry. So you see this is a really useful tool for saving you time and um, working in development mode with Docker. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.